worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. You see, I'm wearing the alb today because we held our communion service this Sunday. The alb comes from the Latin alba, which means white, so the garment's always white, remembering baptismal garments, and also recalling Jesus' Last Supper, serving his disciples and washing their feet. A couple highlights as we look ahead, we invite all of our St. Paul's families to an outdoor egg hunt around the garden entrance and the parking lot, which will be safely blocked off. That's this, this Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Please take note of the Holy Week schedule, beginning with outdoor blessing of the palms on March 28th at 9.30 a.m. We will sing and raise palms and pray, and the gathering will last about 20 minutes. Hope to see you there. Now, let us join in worship. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God grant unto you, being penitent, 
pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I was a boy, I loved model airplanes. I'd save and spend what little money I had to buy a new one every couple of months. Then in my early 20s, I loved adventure. I'd use every dollar not spent on books or tuition to finance a Greyhound ticket to the Rockies, a bootstrap excursion to Ireland, or a youth hostel summer in Peru. Airplanes and adventure. And now, as a father, I love my kids. And I love the time I get away from them. What have you loved throughout the course of your life? What do you love in life today? And what do you make of Jesus' assertion that those who love their life lose it? This is Jesus' final public address. We hear it in John chapter 12. It's just before he will be betrayed and put to death. And knowing that his time has come, he speaks of matters of life and death. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus is speaking about the power of sacrificial love, and he's calling us to it. No easy task. Sacrificial love doesn't always come naturally. I love my life. I want to keep it. I want comfort and security, now more so later in my 30s than ever before. Those things are very good. I think it's been this way for all of human history, this desire for comfort, security, self-preservation. Every Monday from 5 to 7.30, I Zoom into a Shakespeare class as a part of my English coursework with the College of New Jersey, and I'm so excited about this class. Before the class, I could talk about Shakespeare for about as long as I could talk about state birds. I really didn't know anything. But now that I'm taking the class, you're going to have to put up with a few Shakespeare references in the weeks ahead. The class is with my favorite professor. He's most endearing. At the start of each class, he asks us all to unmute our microphones because he appreciates the ambient noise. Well, I realized that he never heard the ambient noise of my house, the wails of a two-year-old who doesn't want to go to bed. That's amplified noise, not ambient noise. In one of the history plays that we read called King Henry IV, I met a character who loves his life more than anyone I've met, a plump and red-faced earl named Falstaff. He spends most of his time thinking about drinking or whoring, 
Excuse the reference, but these are very common themes in Shakespeare. There are also many battles. Falstaff enters a battle with his group of soldiers, and as soon as he sees a brave knight from the opposing side coming after him in the distance, he keels over and he pretends he's dead. For shame, old Falstaff. No valor, no commitment to the cause. As Hamilton put it, if you stand for nothing, Falstaff, what will you fall for? Falstaff considers the brave knight slain about the battlefield, and he bellows the infamous line, Discretion is the better part of valor. Discretion is the better part of valor. In other words, better to give up the great cause and save your hide. And so Falstaff lived another day to drink and carouse and whore. He kept his life, his sad little life, capable of no greater love than animal pleasures. Maybe we're not so low as Falstaff, but there's a bit of the Earl in each of us. His shame on the battlefield in order to engage in the sins of the tavern. That drive of self-preservation and pleasure. He binged on booze and sex. He loved his life, but he lost it. A three-hour bender and the whole next day ruined with headaches and regret. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Or maybe for you, it's binging on food and Netflix, or work and money, or gossip and drama. Those who love these things in life will lose their life. Is that what life's all about? Tim Keller is asking questions of life and death. He's the founding pastor of one of the largest churches in New York City, an author of many books, and a man who will soon lose his life. He was diagnosed with pancreas cancer, at the beginning of the pandemic. He wrote recently in The Atlantic, I found myself thinking, no, I can't die. That happens to others, but not to me. He loved his life. He didn't want to lose it. He was a young, healthy, 70 years old. But after some time, his heart began to change. He wrote, since my diagnosis, my wife Kathy and I have come to see that the more we tried to make a heaven out of this world, the less we were able to enjoy it. When we turn good things into ultimate things, they will disappoint us bitterly. This gets us closer to the mystery of sacrificial love. Modest enjoyment comes from worldly pleasures, but ultimate enjoyment is found in love. When good things like airplanes or adventures or college or retirement savings become our greatest good, they will disappoint us bitterly. Don't take it from me. Take it from the man whose mind has been focused greatly, knowing he will lose his life in a matter of months. When we turn good things into ultimate things, they will disappoint us bitterly. So what more is there to life? What about those ultimate things? Jesus talks of his ultimate death and resurrection. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Ultimate life, Jesus says, is found through the cross. Now what does that mean, through the cross? The Lutheran pastor and professor Paul Scherer helps me understand it. He wrote, The cross is any place where a saving love goes out to undergird this life of ours. The cross is saving love undergirding this life of ours. Have you ever done that for someone? Offered saving love to undergird the life of another? Scherer continues, That when you do this, you come back with a hot stab of nails in your hands. Marks of sacrificial love. An experience of the cross. I know some of you are doing this. Spending your lives for the sake of others. For your kids, for your spouse, for your parents, your neighbors. And it costs us dearly. 
exhausts us and leaves emotional marks. This is a part of the life to which Jesus calls us. Theologian Leslie Newbegin wrote that Jesus called us to a life which is not guarded and preserved, but forever thrown away. If you've got scars from the loved one you've been pouring your heart out for, know you're doing the hard sacrificial work that God calls us to do, that Jesus himself did, that in doing so you're in communion with God who gave himself for us. Not that self-sacrifice needs to be self-annihilation. It's not about being a victim of abuse of any sort, but a willing sacrifice of your strength, ability, and love. It makes me think of some of those self-sacrificing heroes we've been hearing about on Wednesday nights throughout the season of Lent. I've so appreciated these gatherings, carrying on this Lenten tradition. This past week, we were joined by Pastor Maggie Ainsley, Director of Pastoral Care at Doylestown Hospital. Yet again, we heard about the heroism of the ICU nurses. Lives not guarded and preserved, but forever thrown away this past year more than ever. Pastor Ainsley shared how exhausted they are. She works with them, counsels and supports them. They've seen so much death this past year. If you know anyone still hesitant about getting the vaccine, tell them to do it for these nurses' sake. For these people who've been pouring out their lives, literally saving the lives of others by risking their own. Spending hours with COVID patients, the patient's only lifeline, the nurses spending hours holding their hands so they didn't die alone, talking with them, encouraging them, hoping with them. The cross is saving love undergirding this life of ours. The coward Falstaff would have called in sick. But these nurses courageously held together the fact of what is with the vision of what God wants. The fact of a pandemic, the fact of vulnerable COVID patients holding that together with what God wants. For these nurses to bravely use their unique gifts to give their life for the sake of others. Those who love their life will lose it. Those who give up their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Let not the cowardly foul staff in us in us all, cling too tightly to this life. Let us not keel over like he, pretending to be useless, preserving your life for another drink or other pleasure-seeking. But as it says in Philippians 2, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He poured himself out, a life not guarded and preserved, but forever thrown away. If there are no marks on your hands from the love you've shared, then wake up to opportunities around you to share it in unique ways. And if you've got the wounds, if you've got the heart of an ICU nurse in you, and you're weary, and you're wounded, and you've been giving of yourself, then hold close to the promise that in giving life, you begin to know eternal life. That God honors those who serve, as Jesus said. Hold that promise close. Find a quiet place and repeat these words of Jesus. A present experience of eternal life to come. When Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest.
Let us pray. Hear us, O God, in all our deep desires. Some we can put into words, most of them we can't, because we are strangers even to ourselves. Of your mercy answer us, after your will and wisdom, not after ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O Lord, to make right judgments in difficult situations. Grant that we may never spare our own feelings. Help us always to be kind, no matter what the circumstances may be. Give us the courage to be honest and the grace and confidence to be humble, that in all things we may show forth the spirit of him who became like us, that we might become like him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we know the price of hating another human being is loving ourselves less. We also know that we shout the loudest when we are most insecure. So center us in your love, that knowing our worth is a divine gift and not a human achievement, we may have the courage to show kindness even when our feelings would lead us astray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those in need and name them now before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those whom we've loved and lost. They are still so dear to us. Hear us as we remember them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these words, however broken, we offer you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.